welcome to For Honor, also known as Everybody Loses Their Minds and No One Plays the Game. The game stopped being fun long ago and now we're just arguing. I kid you not, I had every intention of releasing a video almost two weeks ago on this game. But to start with, it has a horrible server launcher, okay? It's just, it's ridiculous, guys. You can't get into a game 50% of the time. It is abysmal. And at the time, I was willing to put that aside. I was willing to say, okay, this is just a technical hiccup, but you know, there is a competitive scene. We have heroes that I can analyze and break down for you. And then there's a boycott. <laughs> then the entire community, competitive or not, says, we're not gonna play your game for a week until you fix the problems with your game, Ubisoft. And you know what, Ubisoft, did they actually, they actually agreed, they, they said, yes, we're gonna go ahead and fix that. But you know what is a bad idea, releasing a video during a boycott of the game you're discussing. So I decided to wait a little bit. Thank you for understanding the delay. And now, without further ado, the top five best classes in For Honor for beginners. If you're already a pro and you know how to play a Lawbringer using all 50 of the combos at their disposal, you shouldn't be watching this video. I mean, I'm not gonna stop you, you can do whatever you want with the video, but I'm just saying, like, the express intention of the video is for people who are just starting out, so if you're not in that subsect demographic, then don't be surprised if I seem a little bit inept. In the number five spot. Okay, this might shock and astound everybody in the audience today, but For Honor is fundamentally a game about stabbing people. Now it's true, some of them will try to stop you from stabbing them and you will have to tell them no. That is not how you play For Honor. You will accept this stabbing wholeheartedly. This is why I put the warden in the number five spot because they know how to think outside the box. While everybody else is busy figuring out how to stab the other guy, the warden's there playing it safe. They got safety first, they've got some anachronistic armor that far exceeds the technology available to either of the other two factions. And in addition to all that, they don't even bother using their sword. I see that you're trying to stab me and I'm not gonna stoop to your level. I'm going to use my shoulder pads because they're made out of plate mail and you can't penetrate that. So take that. Stop. Stop pushing me. What are you doing? Also, the warden's able to spew jet flames out of their shoulder pads, and while I'm sure that that makes for a very uncomfortable heavy metal suit of armor, it looks really cool. And dare I say it, pretty metal. In the number four spot. Man, why do I have to come out to this stupid Ren Fair? I hate these things. What? What are you wearing? You brought me all the way out here for this stupid fair, and you're just gonna wear that? It's my armor! Are you just gonna wear that? I see you got your red shirt and your brown pants. Are you expecting an attack? Why, are you wearing glasses? What's that even for? I need to see so I can fight. The raiders could attack at any moment, but at least we have the high ground. What raiders are you talking about? This is a Ren Fair. There's just turkey legs and phone cases. Oh, Those raiders! Oh, you both take everything oh, so seriously. This is why I don't go anywhere. Oh. Oh. Belong to me now. You killed him. He was weak. He's a Ren Fair. He wasn't worth his transitions, which are sensible yet comfortable, fashionable style of eyewear. We had funnel cakes. We had turkey legs. We had everything, and you ruined it. And now I have his soul. Ah! All right. So the warden made the list with his Poindexter characteristics of being a generally intelligent, contributing member of society. On the opposite end of the spectrum, able to harness the power of shirtlessness beards and the ability to hold their liquor, it is the Raider. Where the Warden said, I don't want to use my sword, and I'm just going to go ahead and ram you with the side of my body, the Raider took that up a notch and said, I'm not going to use my axe, I'm not even going to do any work, I'm just going to let gravity take its toll. And sure enough, after a few seconds of- Okay. Alright, if I just position myself against the wall, I'll be- Hmm. Okay, in a few seconds, we should be able to... That was not very honorable. 
let's be real here, nobody likes winning or losing matches because of throws. Throws are one of those things that were included in the game that make you wonder, why did gravity have to be in this game? Why couldn't it have been gravityless? It would have been just so much more fun if this was Vikings, ninjas, and knights in space. Nevertheless, every so often you will find a raider and the ability to play a raider in a way that is actually fair and fun for all parties involved if you want to. Once you begin to realize these techniques, you'll begin to look a little bit less like a Viking raider with a two-handed battle axe and a little bit more like a baton twirling drum major whose baton is on fire. Now I don't know if that drum major is able to keep a beat, but I know that he will make a terrifying spectacle for any opponent that goes near him. He's also definitely not sober whatsoever, so that flamey baton is a little bit more dangerous than it would immediately appear. In the number three spot. They said he was a low tier character. They said that he was not good. They said that he had no honor. And they weren't necessarily wrong. Kensei. Really? They're called Kensei? Okay, I'm just gonna call them Samurai from now on, because that's what they are. The Samurai are not a high tier character. They are not something you're gonna see in competitive play too often. They're easily squelched by many of the top tier characters in the game right now. However, they do have one very nice advantage. The Kensei have a very long sword. Okay! But also, the Kensei is a very good learning character. Anybody who has not played the game before can pick up a Kensei and they can execute most of their moves because they are all triple repetitions of their basic move sets. You do three light attacks in a row, you get your execution. You get three strong attacks in a row, you get your execution. It all plays off one another and while combos are easily shut down with interruptions and grabs, that doesn't make them ineffective and it doesn't stop the Kensei from outmaneuvering his opponents if he's clever. Also, they have the most uplifting personality because they wear these masks, so no matter what they're feeling, they always seem just ever so slightly cheerful about the situation. In the number two spot. Warlord Manium used to be good, but then what happened? I stopped playing for a week and when I came back, everybody was better with you than I was. I was the laughing stock of the Warlord crowd. And then, and then I picked up Orochi. And people still laughed at me, but I felt cool while they laughed at me, because I knew that I was cooler than them, because I was a ninja. Look, whether or not I told you to play an Orochi, you were going to play an Orochi as a new player getting into this game. It's literally a ninja. You get smoke bombs, you get to run around at the speed of sound faster than a peacekeeper and faster than Sonic. Citation needed. Not only that, but you can do this stance. hear a pin drop with the tension. Okay, all the pros already left this video by this point, but I'm going to tell you something about the Orochi that very few of them realize. That yes, while it is not competitively viable, it is not a good character because of its low health pool, and it does have a very difficult time dealing with heavier enemies. But the Orochi's split hair timing parries deal so much damage and are uninterruptible once they commence that if you can get the timing on them, you will be able to nail the timing on 90% of the moves that any character uses. If you are good with an Orochi, you can be good with anybody and that makes the Orochi a very versatile and necessary first character for somebody starting out the game. I'm not saying that the path of the ninja is easy, but I am saying that it's Elegance is something that you will never be able to feel with any other character. The feeling of slicing up your enemy like butter when you've nailed that parry is unmistakably Orochi. And in our number one spot. All right, and in the ring we have the Peacekeeper versus whoever the heck the other guy is. And begin. All right, looks like the Peacekeeper is going to go in. Oh, he's doing the old run away really far and really fast so no one can catch him technique. I wonder how the opponent is going to respond. 
Oh, it appears he's gonna chase him exactly the way the Peacekeeper was baiting him. Oh, the Peacekeeper stopped. He's turning around. What's he gonna do? Oh, he's stabbing and he's running again. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here today, folks. This is some really high octane, intense action from the Peacekeeper. At this rate, we might even have a 20 second lead on him. It's possible he's going to lap him. And yes, he lapped him. He's going around the track, folks. He is completely out of here. Spoils of war go to the Peacekeeper, and the other guy just has to fend for himself while the Peacekeeper's friends tear him limb from limb. Man, it would suck to be that guy whose name I don't know. Look, there's a lot of finesse involved with playing the Peacekeeper, all right? You can stab him in the foot, you can stab him in the chest, you can stab him in the head, you can parry to the left, you can parry to the right, you can even try and run away, and they're just gonna chase you down because that's just something the Peacekeeper can do really well. In fact, he's probably faster than just about anything that is not an Orochi, and what's the Orochi gonna do anyway? They don't actually have anything nearly as dispensable in their kit. So really, the Peacekeeper is overpowered as heck. This is well known in accordance with this tier list, Exhibit A, and this tier list, Exhibit B, as well as announcements here, here, and here here uh, that state that the Peacekeeper is a little bit, a little bit too strong. So yeah, play him. He's a good character. You're going to do well with him and uh, you're going to have fun. It'll be good. Just remember to race responsibly. Don't play a Peacekeeper Viking and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you everybody for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit the like button as well as subscribe, hit the little bell so that you get notifications whenever I post a new video, and of course leave a comment just to let me know how you thought of this video. I was a little bit sick when I recorded this video, so I apologize if any of my sniffles got through during the recording of this. I do hope you'll continue to watch my content as I continue forward, making more content like this as well as my parodies and songs that come out depending on my mood. So uh, until then, I hope to see you guys again. Thank you for watching and see you next time.